Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, um, for the past few days, I've been talking about the youths. You know, if you haven't watched it, I think it's a good watch. You know, but today, I, God switched me back over to what I was talking about last week, which was strangers. But anyway, before I get started, let's pray. And as always, place a cross on. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Last week I was talking about entertaining strangers. You know, anybody can think about it. If you're a man or a woman after God's own heart, you know, you kind of, you work for God. And when people disrespect you or treat you bad, it's like they're treating God bad. It ain't my saying, it's his. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. Starting with verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and gave, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was in sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye come unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw ye we thee a hunger, and fed thee, or thirst, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer unto, say unto them, Verily I say unto you, as much as you done it, unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it to me. Did you hear what he said? If you have done it to the least of these, my brethren, my brethren, my people, my chosen, my anointed, okay, then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them and say, Verily I say unto you, And as much as you did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto eternal life. You know, a lot of people read that and don't take heed to it. <laughs> Let me tell you something, people. No respect to persons. First of all, you don't know who God sends. He's strangers. You don't know who God wants you to help. He wants you to help everyone, anybody who have need. You know, you don't, we're not by design supposed to keep turning people away. Yeah, you use discernment. Don't get me wrong. You're supposed to use discernment. But let's go over to a story that we all are familiar with. It might take me a second to read this one. It's a long story. But it has some key points. 1 Samuel chapter 25. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and limited him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man in Mom, whose possessions were in Carmel. And this, the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of that man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding. And of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish. I don't even know what churlish means. Let's see what that means. I ain't never even heard that word before. What's churlish? Let's see if it's in this dictionary real quick. <laughs> churlish. Some words out there for you, boy. And girls. I don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> Whatever. If you're offended, you was meant to be.
churl peasant, a surely ill-bred person, bore, churlish, wow, ill-bred person, <laughs> good Lord, have mercy. I guess we learned a new word today. Today's word today, kids, is churlish. When you get mad at somebody, my name is churlish. Anyway, <laughs> but the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Cato. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said to the young men, Get up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And thus shall you say to him that live in prosperity, Peace be both to thee and peace be to thine house. And peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shearers. Now that the shepherds which were with us, we heard them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel. Ask the young men, ask thy young men, and they will shield thee. Wherefore let the young men find favor in our eyes. For we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever come unto thine hand. And to thy servants and to thy son David. And when David's young men came, they spake to the ball according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. And the ball answered David's servant and said, Who is David? Hmm. And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it to men whom I know not whence they be? Ha! Huh. I hear people say that all the time. I work hard for my money. They're going to they give it to you. <laughs> Y'all better pay attention. So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those things. And David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And they went up after David about 400 men and 200 of bold by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail the Baal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out to the wilderness to salute our master. And he railed on them. <laughs> he railed on them. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, not to miss we anything, as long as we were com conversing with them when we were in the field, conversing, conversating, you know. Think about that. Entertain strangers. Communicate with people. Get to know people. They were a wall unto us both by night and day. All the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore know, know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against uh, our master and against all his household. For he is the such of son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine and five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parts of horn. And a hundred clusters of raisins and two hundred cakes of figs and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband. And it was so. As she rode on the ass that she came down by the convert of the hill. And behold, David and his men came down against her and she met them. Now David had said, Surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow hath in the wilderness. So that nothing was missed of all that pertained to him. And he had required me evil for good. So and more also do God unto the enemies of David, if I leave of all that pertains to him by the morning light, any of that piss up against the wall. If you don't know what that means, that means any man with a penis. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lightened off the ass and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, Lord, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be. She took the punishment. And let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience. And hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial. Now she's talking about her husband. Even the ball, for as his name is, so is he. The ball is his name, and folly is with him. So I guess his name means kind of, kind of kind of foolishness or something. But I thine handmaid saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord have withholding thee from concerning coming to shed blood, and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. And now this blessing which thine handmaid have brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. 
I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. That's if they start prophesying to David. People be like, man, I'm going to tell you something, people. Prophecy come in many ways. Watch this prophecy. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid. For the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. And evil have not been found in all thy days. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul. But the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God. And the souls of thy enemies, them shall be slung out as out of the middle of a sling. Think about that. Sling, Goliath? Why she prophesying, she bringing things. I'm, I'm sure David, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm sure David like, hey, <laughs> how does woman know so much about me? Hmm. Well, when the Lord speaks through people, he says things, he reveals things. And it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning thee, and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel, prophecy, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, either that thou, thou hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord have avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dwelt, dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. And David said unto Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice. And blessed be thou, which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. So he's, now think about this. Angels underwear multiple cases in this situation. Abigail was an angel. He was a stranger to David. David was a stranger and an angel to Abigail in Nabal's house in the wilderness. Now you, you see you see it? Do you see it? And blessed be thy advice. Blessed be thou which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from visiting myself with my own hand. For in very deed as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which have kept me back from hurting thee. Now think back now. The Lord said for every temptation I will have a way out. I give you a way out of every temptation. So can check that out. They were about to do something stupid. Mm -hmm. And a woman came in and stopped them. Working for the Lord. Then prophesied on. Mm -hmm. Except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto the ball by the morning, like any that pissed up against the wall. So David received with her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace of thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king. And Nabal's heart was merry with him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died with him, and he became as a stone. <laughs> and it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord smote the ball that he died. He could have been blessed. He could have been blessed. But instead, he was stressed, died of sorrowful heart. Now, when David heard that the ball was dead, he said, Blessed be the Lord, and have pleaded the cause of my reproach from the hand of the ball, and have kept his servant from evil. For the Lord have returned the wickedness of the ball upon his own head. And David sent a commune with Abigail to take her to him to wife. Well, he made a promise to him. Like, I'm going to take care of you. He didn't know that was going to happen, though. And when the servants of David were come to Abigail to Carmel, they spake unto her, saying, David sent us unto thee to take thee to him to wife. And she arose and bowed herself on her face to the earth and said, Behold, let thy handmaid be a servant to wash the feet of the servants of my Lord. And Abigail hastened and rose and rode upon an ass with five damsels of hers that went after her. And she went after the messengers of David and became his wife. David also took Ahinoam of Jezreel. And they were also both of them his wives. Wow, boy. But Saul had given Michelle his daughters, David's wife, to Fauti, the son of Laish, which was in of Gollum. That's a great story. Don't you think? 
You see, you got to read the Bible to understand a lot of things that goes on in here. If you read this story, you'll understand what God was telling David when he went after his own lust and, and killed a man and took his wife. When he was like, I, haven't I given you the wise of your enemies? Well, you don't even know who you're talking about. If you don't read the Bible. Like, what are you talking about? What there you go. That's what he's talking about. If I would have given you such and such things, if you would have listened to me, if you would have hearkened to me, if you would have just kept doing the things that were pleasing to me, I would have gave you so much more, David. You understand? But in this case, David took heed to the Lord's voice through a stranger. Now, what does this have to do with what God said, what Jesus said in Matthew? A lot. When you did it to the least of them, you did it to me. My children. But just think about it though. Let's say you treated a somebody who wasn't a child of God, who was hungry and thirsty. You still did it to him. But God wants you to, God said, He said, rain on the just and the unjust. So guess what? We're supposed to help the just and the unjust too. But you can see the angelic. If you read scripture, you're gonna all these stories and all these sayings in the Bible are gonna start making perfect sense to you the more you read. You see, David was a stranger in a foreign land. And he took it upon himself to he didn't take nothing from the balls, hers, and he just helped them out. He was like, hey man, just sit him over there and see if he can help us out of this baby. The ball rich got money. Thing is, he wanted them to give him food, but he was throwing a party at his house. Well, I don't want to help my friends. You see, that's what a lot of people are. I, t I tell this story all the time. People that go up to a service station, right? And they'll see somebody there. And they'll be coming out the store with, I'm just going to use an example. They have a 24 pack, and they're having a party at their house. And they'll run into this strange at the gas station while they're going to get some ice for the cooler. And the stranger, like, man, you mind if I get $2? Give me a beer. I work hard for what I got. You need to get you a job, too. Stop getting off your, get off your lazy butt. A lot of y'all Christians, y'all do that all the time, don't you? <laughs> you Christians, you saints. Hmm. I smoke and uh random people walking to me, man. You might have you got some cigarettes for me. I work hard with my cigarettes. <laughs> I ain't giving you nothing. Get you a job and you can have your own cigarettes. <laughs> no, I just give them to them. Here you go. If I got it to give, I give it to them. I ain't got time for the election. You know these are killing you. Like they're killing me too. I got time for that. I do what's set on my heart to do. The ball did what was set on his heart to do. Nothing. Mm. Not knowing he was entertaining one of the Lord's servants. You know, I don't know what killed him. The fact that David was about to slaughter him? Or what? How did he die? But there's somebody else in the Bible that died the same way, similar. Herod. How did he die? He had just killed one of the, the Lord's disciples and wanted to kill Peter too. Around Easter. Then he had a little party and, and the people under him is God. And the Lord smote him because he didn't reverence God. And he killed God's anointed. Some strangers in a foreign land. You see, people, y'all got to be careful how y'all treat people. Christians. I work hard for my mother. 
I play hard. Oh, okay. Be selfish. Be greedy. Keep showing respect to persons. You might be like the stranger. You might be. You might be one of the goats instead of the sheep. You might call yourself the goat, but you are a goat. Because you ain't helping his people. Let me pause and I will continue.